Welcome to the SMB Community Podcast with hosts Amy Babinchek, James Kernan, and Carl Polacek. Produced by Kernan Consulting and for the international MSP community, we are dedicated to making every IT professional a successful IT professional. Hi, this is Carl, and this is going to be a very different sort of SMB community podcast because it's just going to be me with no guests talking about some strategies for you with regard to AI and your customers. So there's several pieces to the AI puzzle, and I've had several people in the last few days ask me, what's your preferred strategy (laughs) for AI in the SMB IT market. Well, interestingly enough, I would say the first thing you need to know is that it starts with education. You, your team, somebody on your team must become the AI expert, the person who knows more about AI than everybody else, the person who is capable of actually explaining it to other people and making sure that it's usable in human terms. Right now, AI is at the peak of its hype cycle, meaning that so many people are just talking about it and talking about it and nobody actually knows what it is. I remember way, way, way back in the day before the internet was uh, open to the public. Uh, It was getting ready to be open 1994, and there was talk about, okay, do we need this, do we not need this? But as soon as somebody got it, as soon as somebody went out and paid an incredibly high amount of money to get a fractional T1 in their office and get big access to the internet, well then, They told their friend at a golf club, and then that friend went back to their business people and said, I need the internet. Now, I was working in corporate IT at the time, and I remember the uh, president of the company coming to me and saying, we need to get the internet, or I need to get an internet. And I was like, "What, what are you talking about? Like, why do you think you need this? And he said, that doesn't matter. Uh, My friend has the internet and I need the internet for our company. So that, you know, hey, luckily for me, I had a great use case because we were uh, distributing data through a series of 72 rack mounted modems attached to uh, an old, what today people call a mainframe. It wasn't really a mainframe, but that doesn't matter. Anyway, so, I wrote up an essay about uh, this, and then I had to write an essay of why I needed to get connected to the internet. So that that's literally the equivalent of where we are today. Corporations are saying, well, I need this artificial intelligence thing. I can't spell AI, but I, I want access to it. So where we are right now is that you need to be a consultant your job at this moment in (laughs) January 2024 is to help small businesses make good decisions with regard to their technology. That begins with having somebody on your team understand what is AI? Where does it apply inside their business? Where can it help them automate things? Where can it help them to be more successful? And that's going to be different for every different person. Now, we are in a bit of an era where managed services has become selling and reselling the exact same thing by everyone to everyone all the time. And so everybody puts together a bundle and I have to take some blame for having designed these bundles and shown people how to do this, but here we are. You get a bundle, you put a bunch of stuff in it, you give it a price, you push it out, and everybody buys the same thing, ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. And that's a great way to make money, but in an era where there is dramatically changing new technology, you need to be a consultant. 
many people who got into managed services in the last 10 years are not consultants. They have never been consultants. They have been salespeople installing technical things and then maintaining them and fixing them. When I say be a consultant, I mean go into somebody's office, find out what they do, figure out what their problems are, and design a solution that helps them to make money, save money, improve their services, or simply do something bigger, better, faster than they've ever done it before. But that is a very customizable thing. You can't just go to everybody and say, buy Copilot and you'll be done. Mm, no, that doesn't really work. That's what Microsoft wants your business model to be. But as, as I have long encouraged you, you should not let vendors determine what your business model is. So when you think about going out to market, you need to make sure that you focus on what the client actually needs and then figure out how to help them. Having said all that, this may start with Copilot simply because it's the low fruit today. But bigger picture, you need to keep somebody tuned up on the evolving world of AI. And here's what's really interesting. A lot of people haven't figured this out. They look at this point in time and say, today, Microsoft has released Copilot. Oh, okay, good, good for Microsoft. But the reality is that Beginning today, the world of AI, now that it's in general release, commercially available, and there's about, I don't know, 50 options that are all alternatives to Copilot right now, you're going to see massive changes in the next 12 months. You're also going to see a lot of competitors come out of the woodwork, and now that Microsoft has set an anchor price, they will be just slightly cheaper than that, or maybe a lot cheaper than that. And so somebody has to be tuned up on what AI can do for you. Now, here's what I recommend in terms of a, a fundamental approach to AI in your SMB IT consulting business. Step number one, somebody needs to get the training, like official what can you do with this technology training? Document it, find the juicy good stuff that actually applies to your clients, figure out how you're going to show your clients what works. <clears throat> they need to understand the general concepts, but they also need to understand the much bigger picture. I would include in step one, in the training step, that these people then come and train your staff. So one technician goes and learns some stuff about AI and comes back and teaches everybody else in the office. Step number two is I highly encourage you to train your clients. Set up a basic 40 minute, in fact, I, what I would do is I would create a 20 minute and a 40 minute version of an AI training at literally the highest possible level, but put together slide decks so that you can do a training for clients that says, okay, here's what AI is, here's what it is not. Here are the dangers of AI. People should be aware there's lots and lots of research now. We've covered this on the Killing It podcast uh, time and time again. As a, as a general rule, artificial intelligence tends towards the norm, the mean, the whatever of what it has been trained on. And so it doesn't know right from wrong. It doesn't know about security. It doesn't know about discrimination. It doesn't know about copyrights or violating laws or fair use. So there are dangers. 
You do not want to be the person who told your clients to use AI and then have them generate something that violates the copyrights of a very large and litigious corporation somewhere in the world. So you have to be aware of this and you have to make your clients aware of this. Everybody needs to know that AI is like every other technology in one important way. You are responsible for using it responsibly. So when you go to market and you, you talk about AI, you have to make sure people understand they need a data management policy. I hope everybody's already got a privacy policy and that you're helping your clients develop privacy policies, but you have to figure out that you also need to know when and where they should be able to use corporate data. Can you just plug corporate data into some run of the mill AI tool that you downloaded for $4 off the internet? Probably not. Should you be putting corporate data into something that you get for free on the internet? Absolutely not. But remember, many, many people, not everybody, many, many people are extraordinarily lazy and they don't care about the law. They don't care about uh, privacy. They don't care about discrimination. They don't care about fair use, copyrights, whatever. You've seen it. People copy and reuse copyrighted material on the internet all the time. It's people, there are people who literally believe that any image they see on the internet is free for them to use and copy and put in their materials until they get sued. And unfortunately, it's so widely done that almost nobody ever gets sued, but that doesn't mean you can't be. So companies have to behave better than individuals because individuals don't have enough money for a corporation to go after, unless it's somebody like McDonald's. But companies as a rule have some value and they have some money in the bank and they can be sued into the stone age. So you need some guidelines. You need to figure out how we're gonna put some, some safety bumpers around the use of artificial intelligence. Now, I kind of threw it in there, but there's some work for you to do in selling these uh, privacy policies and data management policies, right? When and where shall we be able to use company data? When and where shall we be able to use AI and merge the two of them together? You have to be very careful about that. So that can be, believe it or not, you know, three or four slides. You just have to, to Google dangers of, of AI, downside of AI, that sort of thing, and put something together, but it can be done. Next, you wanna do in your, in your slideshow for clients, what are some basic practical uses? What's, where is AI already inside of their business? Little bits of AI have been put into all of the Adobe products. So the generative fill on all Adobe graphic products, for example, is spectacular. It needs some practice, but it, it works, it's there. They, if they have Adobe Cloud, they're already paying for it. Little bits are inside of Microsoft, uh, all the miscellaneous Microsoft products. Some of it is useful, some of it is annoying, but these are all just new Office features that need to be trained up, right? So learn how to do it and then show your clients a few little things. Oh, you can do this, you can do that. And then just basically show them around things that they can do that are actually useful. Now, if you are going to sell Copilot, then you can also include that in your training. And remember that AI is something where, again, too many people are going to be very, very lazy. So you need to help them to learn the juicy good stuff. I love Bigger Brains, which I think is getbiggerbrains.com. They have lots of trainings on all kinds of stuff. I can't wait for them to come out with Juicy Good AI training and in particular, Copilot AI training. 
But in the meantime, uh, Amy Babinchak does co-pilot training and you can find out for your staff how uh, she is using it and recommend that you use it. Um, but, but also, you need to make sure that you are, show people how to be safe with it, right? So teach your clients how to use it. Again, you can have a very, very short presentation and that will um, allow you to get in their office, be on their happy side, right? Because you're actually helping them to build their business appropriately and to be safe and to be more productive and so forth and so on. You'll be giving them something that they are hungry for just because of the timing in the universe right now. I will note for the record that you will be revising this training at least once a quarter for the entire year simply because of the changes that are coming and your experience as you go through steps three and four. So these, these steps aren't really in order one, two, three, but they are things to do. So the third thing to do is to dig in and implement AI in your business and see where it's actually useful and where it's not. And here's what I mean by that. If you look at the, the things that you see people bragging about, oh, you know, I, I installed this and now um, I get it to summarize an entire email chain in one click. It takes about uh, 30 seconds or less. Okay, that's great. So now I got that entire email chain and it has turned it into uh, half a paragraph and 17 bullet points. But only you can determine whether or not it's accurate. Is that a good summary of that conversation? Did it actually pick out the most important things or did it just glom on to the most commonly discussed things? You know, sometimes an email chain gets all focused around one sidetrack conversation on the sometimes least important thing in the conversation. Well, you know, if, if you're built on large language models, you might look and say, oh, the most, the most important thing in this conversation, because it got talked about all the time, was which font to use on the letterhead. Well, that may be the least important thing in that conversation. Only you, the human being, will be able to figure that out. And again, I mentioned laziness. Some of you listening to this are also lazy. And so what you want to do is click a button, let AI summarize your conversation, and then copy, paste, send that off to your boss. And then your boss is going to think you are what we used to call an idiot, right? So don't do that. You have to side check AI's work. It doesn't know your voice yet. And one of the promises, we'll see if it comes true, but one of the promises of AI is that eventually it will learn your voice. It will learn, not just from this conversation, but from all your conversations, the kinds of things that you think are important. So if you think values are important, if you think honesty is important, if you think transparency is important, then eventually it'll realize those are the things it should be picking out of these conversations, not just the most common word and its synonyms. So part of that is gonna help you formulate how you go to your clients. It will give you some examples. I did this and this and this and see this horrible summary. Okay, how did I teach it, right? How did I use the chat feature to go back and forth and teach it what was actually important in that conversation. And so the other thing that happens is that it's really, really important that you know exactly how AI touches corporate data and what it does with it. We are going to see many, many people accidentally feed something into AI and then release corporate data out to the public, perhaps even send it off to clients or competitors in an email because, again, AI doesn't know where the boundaries are between what's in your privacy policy and what's not. It doesn't understand the, the, the borderlines. You're 
human clients probably don't understand it either, right? So you have to be very, very careful about that. Um, if employees suddenly find that they have access to something that they shouldn't have access to, and they, you know, basically use AI, scoop up a bunch of stuff, and then put it on a laptop, take it home, share it with uh, the friends, neighbors, family, uh, whatever, they may be violating all kinds of common sense policies. So again, it is up to you to make sure that they are educated on how to avoid this. Come up with some very practical things. And again, step number three is internal use to actually figure this stuff out. You know, part of what you have to do is if you're going to dig in and you're going to sell this and you're going to support it, figure out how it works inside your business and then work to make sure that you understand and have some good examples for your clients of what to do and what not to do, how to be safe with it, how to isolate data. That's a whole different level of uh, training that you and your team are going to have to go through. And then, of course, not all of your clients have their data set up the exact same way. It's not all in Teams. It's not all in SharePoint. It's not all on Microsoft. It turns out that a lot of people use all the other technology in the world. And so whether it's Copilot or something else, you got to figure out how do we proceed carefully with this. And you also in that, in going back to uh, the number two, the training of clients, you should make sure that you understand how to improve the performance of the prompts and so forth, right? So that needs to be something that you, somebody on your team has got to figure that out. There, there are now jobs for people who know how to write good prompts. That will not go away. That will simply increase in 2024 quite dramatically, in my opinion. Um, but that, that's good because that means that the price will go down and you'll be able to uh, hire somebody on Fiverr. But remember again, you got to make sure you're not violating security, you're not violating your data management policies and your privacy policies. All right, the fourth thing that I think you need to do is to figure out what you're going to sell and and what how you're going to bundle it. Microsoft has used their standard naming conventions, which is uh, to put six words in a jar, mix them all up and pull them out one at a time and give the stupidest names possible to this new technology. So Copilot, when it was in its early release, Microsoft said, well, this is the, uh, the AI for the masses and we want the common business to have access to it. So the minimum requirement to be in their early program was 300 licenses at $360 a year. Okay, that's $108,000 to try out some new technology. Microsoft once again is demonstrating that they have no idea what the common business is. Um, and as usual, they have moved uh, once again further away from the SMB side of the market. The release version of Copilot for business as of today is $360 a year, and I believe it's available only on an annual commitment or an annual license. So it is more expensive than what most people are paying for Office 365. Uh, now, that's the business version. The pro version which Pro is the name for the home version. The Pro version is only $20 a month, also one year commitment. And it is not available on a business account. So if you've gone through this ridiculous, annoying thing that Microsoft does where you have to, every time you use a Microsoft login, you have to say, oh, this is the login for business, or this is the login for school, or this is the login for home, so they can apply the right options. Well, you have to have a home version in order to use the cheaper version of Copilot. 
The cheaper version of Copilot includes a strong emphasis on Dolly and ChatGPT or GPT-4. So you get much higher access and faster access to those tools. Um, and actually, it's pretty darn good for small business, but Microsoft doesn't want you selling the home version of Office 365 to businesses, so uh, there you are. Also, a great reason to look at all the other companies that are selling AI and what kinds of things they're offering and how they're bundling their stuff. So uh, once again, Microsoft uh, hasn't quite figured out how to make licensing work in the real world. When you look at this, uh, again, today you can go to copilot.microsoft.com and get started, but you no longer have to buy the, the 300 seats. You can get one seat per seat pricing at $360 a year. You got to figure out whether or not it is worth reselling. So step number four that I talked about is actually doing the reselling. So if you are a Microsoft Cloud Service Provider, CSP, you should be able to add these to your bundles. You should be able to figure out how to sell this as an add-on and figure out how it fits in your bigger, bigger picture. So make sure that you've got some kind of system for reselling, that you understand how you're doing this. That might require some training up on licensing and uh, so forth and so on. Make sure that you go through that process. Again, you may get it through one of the great resellers out in our community uh, or get it straight through Microsoft. We shall see. Again, it's an evolving world, but you need to dig in and do it. And I'll add kind of a bonus. Uh, based on the training that we talked about earlier, I also think you can take the 20-minute version of your training, the highest level training, just to give people some answers and go out and give that presentation at every chamber of commerce you can find, you know, the, the big chamber, the small business chamber, uh, the Latino chamber, uh, you know, on and on and on. There's a, there's many cities have five, six or 10 chambers of commerce. Larger cities have many more. Plus there are weekly meetings for Rotary, Kiwanis, Latip, all kinds of business meetings happen in your city all the time. Go to them, offer to make this presentation again and again and again. You'll get better at presenting it. Over time, you'll have better and better examples. You'll tune into the news. You'll you know, have better content over time. And you will be the expert on AI in small business. So that would be, big picture, we're looping back to the beginning, my recommendation for your business for AI in 2024. Comments here are absolutely welcome. Share this with your friends. If you watched it on YouTube, give it a thumbs up. If you saw it anywhere else, give it a like and uh, you know, subscribe to our channel. We would appreciate it very, very much. And we will all be back next week on the SMB Community Podcast.